Obsidian Publish makes it incredibly easy to publish your Obsidian Vault online. But maybe you're not sure if that 20 bucks a month price tag is worth it just yet. If you've got some technical skills and a little bit of time, I'll show you how you can publish your Obsidian Vault online completely for free. Around the same time that I started my YouTube channel, I also considered writing a blog. And I was always stuck in this catch-22 of if I did start to write content, where would I post it? And I looked at Medium, I looked at hosting my own blog, and ultimately I decided it was too much trouble and I should just not worry about it. Um, and at the same time, I was producing tons of content inside of my Obsidian Vault, um, but that was really just for me. And so I started to think through, is there some way I could actually just have that be the source for what I publish online? Um, long story short, I came across a handful of other folks who had their own digital gardens online. So I started to think about how could I actually make that be a thing. And uh, I looked around and Obsidian Publish was a thing, but the $20 a month price tag was a real barrier for me. The idea of paying $20 a month indefinitely for something that I wasn't sure at the time if I was going to stick with was a little bit tough to swallow. And so I started looking around for um, different things that I could use to get here. So. This is where I've landed. This is the new brandonkboswell.com before I had just a simple landing page with my socials and I've since swapped it out with my digital vault. And um, I'll, I'll let you make up your own mind on whether you think it looks good, but I'm happy with it and uh, <laughs> that's enough for me in this case. But um, yeah, you have, a, you have a homepage here that's managed through an index file inside of Obsidian. You can put anything you want here and then all the links use standard Obsidian syntax where, with backlinks and you can click through on them. So this home page, I've got it set up where it doesn't show the graph, but every other page will. So if I click on design, you can see the title when it was published and anything that's linked will be in here. And then you also have an interactive graph of everything that references this page. So you can see that there's a bunch of things that jump off of design and then from design also it links to the home page and there's a bunch of things that launch from the home page. And so you can tap through on any of these and it'll it'll jump around and it works the way you would expect it to. It's got light mode, dark mode, and you can also search for any content. So let's say I wanted to look for stuff related to TickTick. Um, I have an article in here on TickTick. And so it's an app that's a task manager. And again, this is this is literally my entire Obsidian Vault that I haven't decided to make private. So let's dig into what all is involved. There is a post for this on my digital garden um, that has all the details and some setup instructions. If you get stuck at any point, please go read this article. It's gonna have way more content than I'm going to be able to get into in this video um, and a lot more depth. So at the core of all of this is this wonderful repo called Quartz. It's made by this lovely person, Jackie Zhao. Jackie, if I butchered your name, I apologize. And basically what this does is it takes um, your Obsidian Vault and it converts it into standard markdown and then it puts it into the layout very similar to what you see here. Um, I've made some minor tweaks to this, but this is largely representative of what you get out of the box from Quartz. And one of the really great things about Quartz is if you're willing to publish everything within your vault, all you have to do is clone this repo, link up your vault, put your content, like basically have your Obsidian vault be within this repo. And then you commit everything and you push it to GitHub and it'll run this GitHub action when you push and it'll convert everything and publish it to GitHub pages. If you don't have any private content, this is by far the easiest way to do it. Um, if you need to tweak the layout, you just adjust the layouts on your local machine, commit those up, and then as you push, it'll go to GitHub pages. Um, for me, I needed uh, a little bit more than just this. I, I wish I could have just done this, but in my Obsidian Vault, I have private content, you know, personal things that I write just to myself that I'm not willing to share, and I didn't want to deal with multiple vaults. So what I've done instead is I use this wonderful library called Obsidian Export by Nick Gronin. Nick, again, I'm sorry if I got your name wrong. Basically, you point it at your Obsidian Vault and you can set which files should and shouldn't be exported. And then it'll do a bunch of really good conversion for the wiki links. And then we end up passing that over to Quartz. So because I needed to use Obsidian Export with Quartz, I could no longer use the GitHub action that was baked into it. And so that meant that I needed to add uh, a couple more pieces. 
So if you unpack the Quartz GitHub action, let's hop into here and go to workflows and go to deployment. Basically it uses Hugo Obsidian um, to create the content that it then passes to Hugo. So this is probably a good time to mention that Quartz sits on top of Hugo, which is a static site generator. And basically what it does is it outputs all of your pages in a very precise format that runs incredibly quickly and doesn't need a web server. And that's what enables us to be able to use GitHub Pages to host it completely for free. So at risk of rambling on, let's go ahead and jump into how all of this works. So let me move this out of the way. And basically what I've done is I've cloned down Quartz, I've cloned Obsidian Export, and I've cloned Hugo Obsidian. If, if I didn't have private content, all I'd have to do is clone Quartz, but because we need to filter stuff out, we need these other two as well. And just to talk through how this works, basically what's gonna happen is I've got a script, let's show this. I've got a watch script that will watch my Obsidian Vault. Whenever it sees a change, it's going to compile that content through Obsidian Export, pass that to Hugo Obsidian, and then Hugo Obsidian is gonna drop that content into the content folder within Quartz. At that point, we've, we'll have a Hugo server running over here on the right that will watch for changes to that and then let you preview your changes locally. So let's, uh, let's turn that on. All right, so on initial load, it's gonna rebuild everything, and then you can see here on the right that uh, Hugo is processing it. And so I've got a web server running on localhost 1313. And so let's pull that up and see what it looks like. So there you go. So there's the homepage running locally. And let's just go in here and verify that everything is going through. So I'm gonna go into design and then we can see this. And I'm gonna pull this status of shrub off. So let's open up Obsidian. We're gonna go to design and then let's get rid of the status of shrub. And then if we look back, you'll see that nodemon, which is in our compile script, notice the change is gonna recompile everything and then the site is adjusting over here. So if I go over to localhost 1313 and refresh, we should see that status of shrub gone in a second. It might take a second. There you go, that status is gone. So basically I can leave this running, update everything in my Obsidian vault and then if I ever want to preview it, I can preview it here. All right, this is all outputting to uh, two places. So let's open up Quartz. So this is uh, my Sublime Text where I've got this library set up that's got everything. So this BKB, this is my raw Obsidian Vault. When I make a change, let's actually pull up that compile script just so you can kind of see how all this stuff works. So compile script and the watch script. Okay, let's walk through this line by line. You can ignore these first few lines relating to Go. I only use Go for Hugo Obsidian and I noticed that this brew command was slowing down um, my, my initial at, uh, startup within Bash. So I just pulled it out, out into here so I didn't need it all the time. But the core of this command is making sure I'm in the Quartz library and then running Nodemon on my Obsidian Vault location. So I leave my Obsidian Vault inside of iCloud and then what this is gonna do is it's gonna watch for changes to it and it's gonna watch for changes to Quartz. Now notice that I don't watch the Quartz folder um, at the top level because content is gonna get dropped into the content folder when Obsidian Hugo is done and I don't want this to end up in our uh, infinite loop. So I just watch the likely directories that are gonna change. So the JavaScript folder, the styles folder, layouts, config.toml and config.yaml. And when a file in any of those folders changes with an extension of Markdown, HTML, JavaScript, SCSS or XML, it's gonna run this compile script. This compile script is then going to make sure we're in the Hugo Obsidian directory. It's gonna empty out the content from any previous runs of this. And then it's also gonna empty out the public folder within Quartz to make sure that nothing is there as well. And then it's going to run the Obsidian export command 
and I have this add titles command, which will convert the path of the file to the title in the front matter. Hugo looks to that front matter to determine what title to show inside the layout. And you don't get that automatically from Quartz or Hugo Obsidian. So I made it so Obsidian Export will do that for me. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna look inside of my Obsidian Vault directory, and then it's going to put that into my Quartz content directory. I'm then gonna run Hugo Obsidian on that Quartz content directory, leveraging the assets indices as the output, and then um, having the root directory be the Quartz directory. And then it's gonna run Hugo Minify on that, which is gonna output the content that I can upload directly to GitHub. On the GitHub side of things, I'm gonna have two repos, one for my Quartz layout itself, and another for the content that I'm gonna publish. So this is where I make changes to the layouts, my config files, and I upload those for posterity. And then the garden is a separate repo I've created, which is just gonna have the content. And this is what drives GitHub pages. What I upload here is directly what output from Quartz, and that's what's gonna go on the actual web page. So if I go into settings, this is where I can set up how GitHub pages should deploy, and I've got Brandon K. Boswell set up as my custom domain. If you don't have your own custom domain, you can output to um, your GitHub user github.io and that'll work just fine. So one other thing we should chat through is your export ignore file. This is a file that you can set up at the root of your Obsidian vault at .export-ignore. And here you can indicate which files and folders should never get exported by Obsidian export. So here I've got set that templates, private folder, um, collections, and people should all never get exported along with the rest of this other stuff. Uh, but this just allows me to make sure that all of my private and personal content never gets um, online. One way I can make sure that this is never the case is by using Obsidian Export in front of Quartz. And so instead of Quartz reading my entire Obsidian Vault, it's just getting the subset from Obsidian Export that I've set. And so I don't have any concerns that I'm accidentally going to commit a bunch of things that I don't intend to. So that's a high level walkthrough of how everything's set up and how it works. Let's go through and make an actual change and publish it online so that you can see what that looks like. So let's go back to my Obsidian Vault. Um, this underscore index file is what drives the homepage. And let's just make a basic change to this just to demonstrate that it works. So I don't think I have a file yet for Digital Garden, so let's go create one. So let's make this something and we'll create a page for it. And this is my default template, we'll call it status new. And uh, let's just put something in here. All right, this is awful, but we're gonna post it anyway. <laughs> and so now that's gonna be at the root uh, and we'll see it right there. And so let's now go back to localhost 13.13 and check out the homepage. And then if we scroll down, we'll see that digital garden is now highlighted. And if I hover over it, I can see that it's there. And then if I click through on it, it's right there, status new, and it's linked to all of these. I can see here in the back links that it's linked to Obsidian and linked to Home. And then if I now want this to be on the public version of this, all I've got to do is commit that to my public library. So if I do a get status, you're going to see that everything is going to get uh, recreated each time. And you'll also see that there are a handful of new things that I haven't um, had here previously, such as digital, digital garden. And so now if I want to make this public, all I have to do is say git add all and then do a git commit. And then I just need to push that to GitHub. Git push. And then you'll see 
very shortly. It's gonna take a second. It's not instant, it probably takes about 30 to 45 seconds I were, if I were to guess. So we'll see that GitHub knows about it and then I can just refresh um, brandonkboswell.com until that shows. Again, usually it takes like 30 seconds to a minute. And you play this fun game where you just refresh it over and over until it shows. There it goes, there it is. And so now I just write in Obsidian and when I'm ready to, I commit it and then it's public for the world to see. So that was a ton of content to get through. I hope it was useful to you. If you get stuck at any point along the way, feel free to drop a comment below and do check out the article on brandonkboswell.com. I go through step-by-step -step instructions in a lot more depth to help you get started. Anyway, thank you so much and have a great day. Hey guys, before you go, if you enjoyed the video, please tap the like button. If you didn't, then that other button works too. And you can help me out a ton by subscribing to the channel. Thanks. Have a great day. Peace.